The Great Flood of God broadcast. Coming your way in the studios of Trend Africa Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Christ Hill Church. The church that has been sent to take the word of God to the nations. And I want you to tune in to Trend African Radio online. And also to tune in to Christ Hill Church Facebook and also Trend Africa Facebook so that you will be a blessing as you hear the word of God. Christ Hill Church is coming your way from Ablekuma in Sakina, beyond Ablekuma, uh, behind the filling station in Sakina. I want you to tell a friend to also tell a friend and share the video on Facebook that the prophet of God, Eric and Williams, is coming your way with yet another word of God and you are going to be a blessing in this evening in the name of Jesus ladies and gentlemen prophet Eric and Williams praise God hallelujah God bless you man of God God bless you so much man um beloved uh, we love you so much and um, this is TGF It's always an excitement coming your way. Hallelujah. Praise God. We thank God for your lives as he's been good to all of us. And as the man of God said, tag a friend to tag a friend and tell them we are online. Hallelujah. Praise God. And uh, there will be a blessing today. And as he said, we are here to bring you God's word. This is... Um, Pastor Eric Entry Williams, and I'm here with the voice you heard previously before me is Pastor Alfred Dewona Hammond, and then we are here with uh, the woman of God, Pastor Rejoice Hagan. Amen. Amen. They are going to help in the scriptures, and it will be a blessing to you today. Amen. Amen. I just want to pray with you in this short time. Give us your attention as if you're giving it to the Lord God himself. And definitely as the word of God comes, I tell you, there shall be an upgrade in your life and even in your destiny and even in your knowledge of the things of God. And above all, as the word of God comes to you there shall be a performance of the supernatural in your life in jesus holy name and someone said amen amen god bless you so much god bless you and um, we are grateful that you've been following us all this while and to have you even online right now we are grateful and we love you and we appreciate you so much amen um, let's hit it 
you know, if you've been following us for a while, you realize that most of our messages that are coming are geared towards telling men of God's love. Amen. Amen. These are words of salvation. And um, they carry the weight of God's power that delivers men from diverse, diverse things that the enemy is brought against in mankind. Amen. And today I'm speaking on a topic called Restoring the Glory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And um, why this topic? It's because of what has happened to mankind. Because man lost the glory of God when he fell. Amen. Amen. And which began with Adam. And so in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, the Bible said that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Other translations write, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. We will tackle the most important um, things that are written in this particular scripture. We take them one after the other and explain them and then we know the Holy Spirit will help us to move to other wittier matters. Amen. Amen. First, we'll begin with the glory of God which is mentioned in this scripture in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. You know, when I was young, I heard this scripture many a times. Amen. Amen. And many a times, even now we hear this same scripture being the platform on which messages are preached to win souls. And normally, when we go out, we tell them, uh, all have sinned and are falling short of the glory of God, but we don't really explain what the glory of God is. Amen. Amen. And then it also comes with what does it mean that for someone to come short of God's glory? Amen. Amen. And so we'll begin with that one and then we will get to other matters. Now, as the scripture said, for all have sinned, and are falling short or come short of the glory of God. Now, according to scripture, the glory of God actually is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, if the Bible is saying that men have come short of the glory, it meant that they have lost their spirit. Amen. Amen. Because of sin. Amen. But we really need to also explain it well. There is something about this Holy Spirit, even in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, that we ought to understand. Amen. Amen. Now, when the Spirit, the Bible begins to talk about the glory of God, which is the Spirit. If only it entails or it talks about the Holy Spirit, you should know that the Spirit is a person who has his own ability. Amen. Amen. And the Bible calls that ability power. Other scriptures call it fire. Amen. So if the Bible is saying that men had sinned and because of that they had lost the glory of God, he's trying to tell us that men have sinned and they have lost the spirit of God and his power, which is his ability. Amen. Amen. Now, but when you look closer to this particular scripture as we have been taught from beginning it means that we lost the spirit and that is all amen now i told you that the spirit of god is the glory of god we need to find it out from the scriptures first before we get to the other matter amen so let's see scripture that shows that um, the glory of god actually is the holy spirit praise god so first scripture Let's go to the Old Testament. Then we'll come to the New Testament. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Amen. 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 Now, Isaiah the prophet has received an insight, a prophetic insight from God. And he's writing it in a scroll, and this is what he said. What he saw is what he's writing. But this writing was about the Messiah that was to come. Amen. 
And Isaiah said that, Arise, shine, for your light is come. For the glory of God is risen upon thee. What he's talking about here, you realize that in John chapter 8 verse 12, Jesus was speaking and he said, I am the light of the world. Do you understand? So Jesus is the light of the world. Can we all know that when he was born, until he was 30 years and John baptized him and the spirit came upon him, he never started shining in any way. Shining there means reveal his glory to anybody. Amen. Amen. Until he got baptized by John and the spirit came on him. Then he started doing what God has called him to do. That is what we call shining. Amen. But he could not shine or reveal the glory of God until what? He had been baptized by John and the spirit had what? Come upon him. So Isaiah speaking here that arise and shine. Huh? For what? Your light has come for the gl glory of God is risen upon you. That was a mighty word concerning the Messiah. That Jesus, after he was born, had to be around for about 30 years. Nobody heard of him. He didn't do any miracles tangible and all. Even though he lived in Nazareth. The Bible says that he was raised by Joseph the carpenter. And Jesus was also into um, the profession of carpentry. But we find out that he started shining or revealing the glory of God after the spirit had come on him. So it confirms what Isaiah said. That arise, shine, for your light is come. For the glory is risen upon you. So he could not shed the glory or his light until the glory descended upon him. That was the word or the prophetic word that was given concerning the, the Messiah. Hallelujah. He could only shine after the glory was what? had been descended upon him or risen upon him. Hallelujah. Now, when you read Isaiah, you might not understand in those early days, they wouldn't understand who they were talking about and what it really meant. But Isaiah himself, after this one, God showed him another insight. But the next thing God showed him was um, a true revelation uh, of what the glory really is. So, in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1, first we just read the 60 verse 1, which tells us that the Messiah will shine only after the glory was what? Risen upon him. Now, what is the glory? So, in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1, he begins to tell us what that glory is. So, Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. Let's find out what the glory of God is. Isaiah chapter 61 the verse 1. Uh -huh. The spirit of the Lord of the Lord God is upon me uh -huh. because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Amen. Amen. Did you see that? He said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. But in the 60 verse 1, he said he will arise and shine until the what the glory was risen upon upon him. What rose upon him in the 60? The glory in the 61, he said, now the spirit that was supposed to rise upon me, he has what? The glory has come. But here he didn't say glory. He said what? Spirit. What rose upon him, which was called glory in the chapter 60 verse 1. Here in the chapter 61 verse 1, he didn't say glory, but he said the spirit is the one that is risen upon him. So, you, it is easy now to see that the glory of God actually is what? Is the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, let's go to the New Testament. I have two scriptures I've shown you concerning that the glory is the spirit. Now let's get to the New Testament. Romans chapter 6 verse 4. Romans chapter 6 the verse 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Mm. That like, like, as, like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so... We also should walk in the newness of, of life. life. Wow. Amen. Isn't this revealing? We all know that the one that raised Jesus from the dead after he had died and been buried was the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. But when he's describing him here, he didn't say that it's the Spirit that raised Jesus. He said, we all have been baptized into his death. And even as, uh, even as, um, the glory of God raised Jesus from the dead. 
So instead of saying the spirit raised Jesus, he said the glory what? Raised him from the dead. So the spirit of God is actually what? The glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are trying to establish what the glory of God is. And what men lost after sin had come upon them. Hallelujah. Praise God. So now we know what the glory is. That the glory is the spirit. But I was also trying to tell you that when we are talking about the spirit, it comes with what? The spirit as a person and his word and his power. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's find out. Let's find out. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. Let's find some few things out here. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Mm. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, mm -hmm. whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You see, oh, anytime anybody wants to describe the spirit, it, it is not just the person of the Holy Ghost, but it comes also with his word, with his power. These guys that are writing, they said fire. But actually, when you come to the New Testament proper, you realize that they didn't put fire there. They put what? Power. Hallelujah. So, God anoints with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit here is the person of the Holy Ghost. And then with his word, his power, which they refer as fire. Amen. Let's find another scripture that defines this one also. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. I hope you're following me, my dear. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Acts chapter 10 the verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, mm. who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Hallelujah. Amen. So you see here, how God anointed Jesus with the spirit and what? And with what? With power. They go together. The person of the spirit and his ability which we call his power. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, the Bible is telling us that for all have sinned and fallen short of what? The glory. Of the glory. So the glory is the spirit. Now, here he's telling us that we have um, fallen short of what? Of the glory which is the spirit. Now, what does it mean for one to come short of the glory, which is the spirit? It will only come to your mind as if um, the spirit and his power all left man. But that wasn't the case. You realize that it said men have come short. Now, mostly when we started hearing this scripture, when I was young and I heard this scripture, and it was being used to preach, it, it, it was as if men lost the entire glory or the spirit of God because of sin. Hallelujah. But when you read closely, even to the original text, and even what the English conveys, to realize he said, um, for all have sinned and come short. Now, let me give you a scenario and a clear picture of what it means to come short. It doesn't mean that we lost everything which is the spirit as a person and his power. Hallelujah. But rather, men lost what? The spirit as a person. But with the ability or his power, God left something of it inside of us. If we had lost all the glory, which is the spirit and his power, me and you will not be sitting here behind this console, behind this microphone, and in the midst of this light. Because the little of the power of God that was left in the sinful man is what we have used to do aeroplanes for the ships and all these machines that are sitting here. If God had taken all the glory, man will not have wisdom and knowledge and ability to do the things we have done so far. Hallelujah. So God left something. It also describes the nature of God. God is the God of remnants. What does it mean? God doesn't utterly destroy people like that. He always leaves something or he leaves someone behind. Hallelujah. Let's go in deep into the word. i just give you a few examples. Because the Bible said by two or three witnesses a matter is settled. Now, let's go to the time when he destroyed um, uh, people in Noah's time. He didn't destroy all men. He left nowhere in his house. That's how God is. He doesn't destroy utterly. Hallelujah. Let's come to Sodom and Gomorrah. When he went to Sodom and Gomorrah to destroy, he spared Lot and his family. Hallelujah. Let's go to Israel. When they messed up, he didn't destroy all of them. He left a remnant. 
always leaves something there. The same way when God was destroying man because of sin. And what did he do? He needed to take the most important thing from man. Which is what? The glory. Which we have now established is what? The spirit and his power. He took the spirit out. And then the power. He left a little of it. So that knowing that one day. He will come back to us. Now in, in the, old, uh, the new uh, testament concerning the epistles. They, instead of saying fire. They say what? Power. Amen. But actually, it's to the fire of God. This fire, God intentionally left it inside of us so that one day, when a sinner hears the gospel, uh, that fire will be ignited. So the gospel is more like a fuel. God will pour on the soul of a man and ignite the ability of God, which is the power. Now, what is the power of God? The power of God is also the power of faith. Hallelujah. God doesn't always take everything from people. He leaves a remnant. Praise the Lord. I can even tell you. Because the Bible says the gifts of God are without what? Repentance. Look at even somebody so terrible as the devil or Satan. When he sinned against God and he cast him here. Go and read the scriptures. The Bible said that. The Bible called him what? The anointed cherub. The anointing God placed on him. He didn't take it from him. He still got the anointing. That is why he's still doing miracles and all through evil people. Hallelujah. God doesn't take utterly everything from people even when they have messed up. Praise the Lord. So when he's talking about here, for all have sinned and come short, he's talking about God taking the person of the spirit from men and also of the power. Now, when it comes to the power or the fire, you know that we can have a raging fire and we can also have a fire that is very low. Do you understand? That power can also increase or decrease. So in that one, you can add to it or you can what? Reduce it. Hallelujah. Or take from it. But when it comes to the person of the spirit, you can add to him and you can take from him. Are you getting this? So he took the person of the spirit but the ones that can be tampered with which is the spirit he left a little so men can function until the day the Messiah will come and come and save us. So he left something small for us. Hallelujah. So he said for all have come short of the glory. It is just like having a bottle of oil uh, and the bottle is full. Can you pour most of the oil out of the bottle but you leave what? A little Huh? a little oil under the bottle will you tell me that that bottle is fully empty no you will say that the bottle has come what short of the oil that was inside it and that's exactly what God dealt with men if God had taken all the glory me and you would not be here huh? then Adam himself would not even have been 930 years there will not even be anybody to live up to work uh, like uh, Methuselah up to 969 it is the little that he left in that has kept men up till now. Hallelujah. That is how God functions. So, when he's saying that sin has taken from us, it doesn't mean he took everything or all the glory. Let me explain something here with scripture. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. Listen to what God said. So you understand what I'm talking about. We don't just make conjectures and then you just go out there and you are messed up. We stand on the word of God to explain God's word. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. And the Lord said. And the Lord said. My spirit shall not always strive with man. My spirit shall not always strive with man. For he also is flesh. For, he that, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. Yet his days shall be 120 years. Wow. You see. He said my spirit will not strive with men. Which one is he talking about? He's telling us that the fullness of the spirit is not going to be with men forever. Hallelujah. Because of what? Because men had what? Had sinned. So he took the person of the Holy Spirit out of us and also what did he do? Of his power, he decreased it. Hallelujah. But that was not God's intention in the first place when he created man. He created man with the full intention that man shall be and function like him. But it's because of sin he had to deal with us the way he did. Hallelujah. And knowing that he will always come back to men and come and save us. That is why he left something 
he can come back to and work with it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Now, when the spirit leaves a man huh, and the power is reduced, this is the next thing that happens to that man. Because God was the one that controlled man. Now, because of sin, if he leaves you as a person and he leaves just a little of his ability inside of you, can you, who takes over? God made man in such a way that men do not control themselves. Get this one. Man is such an instrument God created that he cannot control himself. He is always supposed to be controlled by another spirit. So if God is not inside you to control you, then a devil will enter you. So when God left man as a person, then the devil what? He stepped in. Hallelujah. And when God lives in you, God's nature is righteousness. And the fruits you are going to bear shall be fruits of righteousness. If the devil now comes inside because God is left. Amen. He left us because of sin. Then the devil who made us sin, he stepped in as master. Because we listen to him instead of listening to God. And the one you listen to becomes your master. So if he's the one that we have listened to, then he's the one coming inside the spirit of man to control man. Hallelujah. So when the devil comes to live in a man, and the spirit that is inside the devil is what we call sin. Hallelujah. That is the spirit or the nature that is in the devil. Now he comes to take over the heart of man. Instead of the spirit or the glory that used to be in men, because now we have what? The glory has come short. Praise the Lord. And somebody needed to take charge, and the devil did. When it comes to live inside of you, this is what happens to you. Genesis 6, verse 5 to 7. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. My God. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Mm. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. Mm. And it grieved him at his heart. Wow. So, when the devil takes charge of a man's soul, I told you the nature that is in the devil is what? Is sin. And the fruits you, you bear are what? The fruits of wickedness or of sin. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, now he takes charge of men. Why? Because they are falling short of the glory of, which is the spirit and his ability or his power or his fire. Hallelujah. Man doesn't have that fullness of the fire to control the devil. Do you get it? Let me explain again. Because sometimes people need to get it right. Somebody might be wondering, they've not heard this one before. Where did this one to come from? Let me explain something. You remember Israel as a nation. Right? Israel as a nation. God sent Moses to deliver them from the bondage of Pharaoh in Egypt. Right? But the pain is, even though Moses delivered them, they were not born again. They only were saved from the nation of Egypt and brought into the promised land. But they were not saved. When I talk of salvation, he's talking about their souls. They were saved physically from the bondage of what? Of Egypt. But their souls were not what? Saved. Because there is only one person through whom men's souls shall be what? Shall be saved. Which is Jesus. And it's not just the man Jesus per se as just a man. But rather of his death and his resurrection. And by the time Moses brought them out, Jesus had not come. He would not he, he, he had not been killed and he had not been raised from the dead. So when he brought them to the promised land, they were still the seed of Adam, which means the nature of sin was what? Inside them. And who, who controlled them? The devil. Because Psalm 36 verse 1 says that sin speaks to the heart of what? The sinner. Even though they were God's people, but they were not born again. So they were still the seed of who? Of the devil. So they still had the seed of the devil inside of them. Because none of them was born again. The reason why I brought this thing to you is that because of that, the ability or the fire inside of them was still the same as the fallen man. They don't have the Holy Ghost in their hearts and the fire that is inside them, inside them is little. Because of that, that fire is not of the fullness. When we talk of the fullness of the spirit, we are talking of the fullness of the glory. And the fullness of the glory is the spirit as a person and his word and his power or his fire. They didn't have the fullness of the spirit inside because they didn't have the Holy Ghost. You can only receive the Holy Ghost through Jesus. He had not come. And the fire, he has been reduced into just a little. So what happened? So 
the Bible says, because in their midst were sorcerers and witches and magicians amongst them who were mesmerizing the people and bewitching them, but they didn't have the spirit inside, nor did they have their fire in fullness to deal with witches. That is why he told them, suffer not a witch to what? To live because they didn't have the ability to cast out devils, the ability to cast out witches. Because to do that, you must have the person of the Holy Ghost inside and the fullness of his fire. Hallelujah. And they didn't have all these things. Why? Because they were counted among sinners. He said, ah, but they were God's people. Galatians 3.22 said, he said, this is the reason why God brought the law. Galatians 3.22 that all men shall be brought uh, and the one thing that all have sinned. Hallelujah. All have sinned means all have. That all men were sinners. Maybe we should read it. And let's be a little fast. Galatians 3.22. The verse 22. But the scriptures has concluded all under sin. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, the, the law was brought to condemn everybody. Whether you were a Jew or a Gentile, that you emanated or descended from who? From the devil. So, all are what? Sinners. Hallelujah. Praise God. And if all are sinners, everybody needs salvation. And if you are a sinner, it means the nature of sin is inside you. And the Bible says in John chapter 8 verse 34, anybody that has this nature on the inside, you don't have the spirit, you don't have his ability to get that which is called the glory because it, we have come short of it. And because of that, sin controlled the heart of men. It's sin who controlled men. Men were in bondage under sin. Hallelujah. Praise and he said, anybody that has the nature of sin inside, as Psalm 36 1 says, sin speaks to your heart. That person has no dread or the fear of God inside. Hallelujah. Two. The next thing is what he said in Genesis 6 verse 5 to 7. Because if the sin nature is the one inside you, he said we continually do wickedly. Every day sin uh, gets greater and more terrible. In their days, there was nothing like uh, computer fraud. But when computers were made, huh? now we have computer fraud. Go into the Bible, there is no sin called computer fraud. Go into the scripture, you find out that nobody was smoking in those days. Was there anything like that? No. But sins, you know, men keep creating sins. Who creates them? The devil inside them, he keeps creating evil things for men to do. Because the guy hates God. And he wants God's people to perish. Because he knows that the wages of sin is what? Is death. Which death? Not just the physical body that dies. But after death, he knows that men will be judged. And if they have the nature of sin, they shall be cast into the lake of fire. Hallelujah. So, anybody that has the spirit outside of them. And don't have the glory inside. The Bible is saying, who is inside? It is wickedness. It is the devil that is inside. It's either you have the glory or you have the devil. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is no middle way. Let me tell you. All those young guys going about who have not received Jesus. And they are saying we all know God. We are all children of God. If you have not received Jesus, you ain't no child of God. Why? Because you don't have the glory that men lost. Hallelujah. Praise the, the glory Lord. that was shortened. That we came short of. You don't have it. And so, what is inside you is the nature of sin. And it controls you. And anybody that does that, the Bible says physically you will die one day. But after death, your soul inside you or your spirit shall be judged. Hallelujah. Praise and if Lord. that nature is still that nature is still there, you shall be cast into the fire. But here is God's word. In that men were into these things. Oh dear. He said God loved men. John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Can you imagine this? This man who lost the glory of God, whom you know inside of them they were shortened by the glory uh, they came short of the glory. The person of the spirit has left them. All they have is just a little ability the Holy Ghost left in there. Hallelujah. That is all we had. That is all we had. Little. So the devil he did with us anything he wanted to do because we didn't have the fullness of the glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But God says he loves us. Hey. 
And because he loves her, if you love somebody according to 1 Corinthians 13, you will not kill them. That's right. So God, if he loved us, will not see us perish. So he came in to save us. And this is the extent of his love. God doesn't just love us. When we say God loves us, it's just a little thing. We are not being truthful with the word of God. He never said God loved us. He said, for God so loved, so, which means the, the one that wrote it, he couldn't find the right word to describe the kind of love God had for us. Because I can love Mrs. Hagan, huh? not as a wife or a woman, but as a person. And you can love someone, that is love. But the God kind of love cannot be compared to the human kind of love. So explaining God's kind of love, he can only use the word so to add to the love, to, what, to make it fresher. Hmm? To qualify it. So he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why? To what? To save us and restore the glory we lost. Hallelujah. Now, let's explain the love. Ephesians 2 verse 4 and 5. Look at how uh, Paul is describing this love. The first one, John is the one that wrote it. He said, God so loved us. But let's see how Paul wrote the kind of love God has for mankind. But who, God who is rich in mercy. But for God who is rich in for mercy. His great love wherewith he loved hey, for his great he didn't say love. He said for his great love. Where is what? He loved, he loved us. us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Did you see that? Yeah. This is how the love of God is. You can't just say God loves me. It's more than just God loves me. It's either God so loved me or of his great love. So this God who so loved us is describing there are people that are rich in aeroplanes. There are people that are rich in cattle. Some are rich in what? In sheep and fishes. Some are rich in estates and houses and factories. But this God ah. is rich in mercy. Da, 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 da. He's rich in mercy. Ah. Some are rich in money. In pound sterling, mm. in euros and all, yeah, like which they, cannot save the soul of men. But this God is rich. Hey, Jesus. That says the Lord. That's right. I am rich in mercy. Da, 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 baha, shala, baha. What does it mean? What is mercy? Mercy is when you have sinned, you deserve punishment, and the person said, I overlook it. Yes. I forgive you. Hallelujah. Yes. And he says, God has that thing in exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can think or ask, which means he is rich loaded in mercy right. to look away from the punishment mm. that is supposed to come on you and to wave it off you forever. Amen. Amen. That's the kind of love God loved us. That is why he decided to restore the glory which is the spirit and his fullness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So what did he do? For him to do it we still have the nature of sin and we have also having that nature we have committed atrocities atrocities with the nature Amen. Amen. We have committed adultery, fornication. We have murdered, committed abortions, shed innocent blood. We have, we have worshipped idols. If that one is even more terrible. The Bible said God is a jealous God. People are worshipping idols, making God jealous, but said, I am rich in mercy, so I overlook. Even though I should have destroyed them, but I overlook. That is what he explained in, in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 and 7. He said, For all had rebelled against him. We all like sheep have gone astray. And he laid our sins upon who? Upon Jesus. Why? Because of his richness in mercy. And because of his great love. His so great love he loved us. Brother, wherever you are, I do not know what you have done. If you are not born again, you don't have the glory. You don't have the spirit of God inside of you. Hallelujah. Praise it's just an aspect of what God is that is in you. And that is not enough to save you by your own self. Hallelujah. That is not enough to qualify you to make you a child of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It takes the fullness to make you a child of God. And God decided to give it back to us. But the nature of sin was a stumbling block. The nature of sin was a hindering force. So for God to give us his glory back, he needed to remove that pain that made us fall. That pain that is not making us receive the fullness of what? Of the glory or of the spirit. He needed to deal with it. And how did he do it? How did he do it? Read the verse 5. Ephesians 2. Verse 4 and 5. He said, God is rich in mercy for his great love where he is. He loved us. Even he loved us. Uh -huh. Even when we were dead in sins. Even when we were dead in sins. Had quickened 
us together with Christ. He quickened us together with by Christ. Grace ye are saved. By grace we are saved. Mm. He quickened us. Why did he say quicken us? You can only quicken something when it is dead. And so, he's telling us that according to John 3, 16, that he said, for he gave his son to die in our place. Hallelujah. So they crucified Jesus and he bled to death and then they buried him. Then it was needful for God to raise him up. And God is saying, I have identified you. When we read Romans 6 verse 4, he said, we are baptized into his death. So when people are baptized and put into water, what water baptism does, I've heard many, they say that it is not necessary for water baptism. But I tell you, he's explaining water baptism here. He said the reason why we are put in the water is that we will identify with the death of Jesus. So that you identify. I remember I just came into Christ. I was a young man. I was not baptized. But I started preaching the gospel. It's amazing. I, I, I had received Christ. And I have received the Holy Ghost. But I have not been baptized with water. And the Holy Ghost says you need to be baptized with water. I said I don't get it. So one night I was lying and he showed me. That I was by a river. And then there were so many people in white garment. When they put them in the water. And then what? They bring them out. He said watch and watch clearly. And see what I'm showing you. So I watched and I wanted to see what it was in the water baptism. Anytime he puts anybody inside the water. When you are dipped under the water. Less than a million of us of a second. It is less than a second. When you go under the water, you die. So when they put me in the water, less than a million of what or a billion of a second, I died under the water. When they brought me out, life entered me. That is how I was quickened. So the same way that Jesus died, when they put you under the water, what you are quickened, you die. But when you are raised up, as God raised Jesus on the third day, the Holy Ghost raises you back together with him. Hallelujah. And what is that for? So that the blood that was shed, you identify with its death. And the death only speaks about the blood that was poured. The blood washes you from your sins. Hallelujah. Now, if the blood washes you, you are no more a carrier of the nature of sin and you are not unclean and impure. Hallelujah. It means you qualify now for what? The spirit to come and what? Dwell in you. The spirit which is called what? The glory of God. And I told you the glory means that the spirit and his word and his power or his fire. Hallelujah. And nobody could do this one. It was only Jesus who could do this. He was the only one to baptize. Hey, John said, I also baptize. You have heard of the word baptism. I baptize, but I baptize only with water unto repentance. But this man that is coming after me is preferred after, uh, before me. In fact, what he's saying is, he is better than me. He is more accepted by God than me. Why did John say that? Because John knew this guy was better than him. So what happened to confirm that he was better than John? When he came out of the water, when John baptized this Jesus, when he came out, the Bible said the spirit of God descended upon him and a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He never said this to John whilst he was baptizing. He never said John was my son that I'm pleased in. He never said it to him. So John was right when he said the one coming is preferred more than me. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 17, when they went to the mount and Jesus was transfigured, he said there was a cloud of the Shekinah glory. When he came out there, he said a voice spoke out of the cloud. He said, this is my son. Hear him. In whom I'm well pleased. Hear him. Which means he's preferred more than John. He's preferred more than Moses. Whilst he was on the mountain with them, there was Elijah and there was Moses. One on the left, one on the right. Christ in the middle. The light came from heaven. It did not descend on Moses. Neither did it descend on Elijah. But it descended only on Jesus. And the voice said, this is the one I have approved. So if there be anybody that baptizes with the spirit and power, it's not Moses. It's not Elijah. Elijah can call fire from heaven, but he cannot transfer anointing to end hey! you didn't hear me so those of you who are saying hey, I want double of Elijah's anointing I don't let me tell Elijah he couldn't transfer any anointing to Elisha mm. will you argue I'll tell you the Bible says he that establishes and anoints us is God 
So it's not Elijah who anointed Elisha. Okay. The one that established an anointment is God, not men. You can go and argue about that. But it's scriptural. You show me yours and let me show you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this guy called Jesus, he was the only one who could carry the fullness of the glory because he had never sinned. He didn't have the nature of sin. So he carried this glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And did mighty things. Then they killed him. When they killed him, if you carry that glory, you can't die. You didn't hear me. If you carry the fullness of that glory, you cannot die. The Bible says in John chapter 3, when this Jesus left Jordan and went to the wilderness and was tempted and he came in the fullness of the power of God. First, he received the, the person of the Holy Ghost at Jordan. Then he went to the wilderness. Then he came in the power. He's the only one after Adam fell who was in the form of a man that has carried the fullness Moses never carried. All Moses had was just a remnant of the power which I told you which is a little of the glory man came short. But God wants to use them. So I told you with the person you cannot add to him. But with the power you can do something. So for God to send Moses, Elijah and the rest he adds a little of the little glory that was left inside. You add a little anointing there so they can do better than every normal guy. But of the spirit, you can't add to him. If you want, you want to receive the person of the spirit, it's got to be only through one person called Jesus. So the Bible says in John chapter 3, verse number 34, it said, he that God sent has the word of God and does not give him the spirit in a measure. He received the person of the Holy Ghost and he received the power. So the Bible says, Jesus is speaking. He said, the works that I do and the, and the words that I speak, it is my father who dwells inside me. So he had the person of the Holy Ghost inside and then he had the power, which is the fire also inside. Hey, that is what men lost. And what was he saying? John says, he was going to give it to men. That is the meaning of baptism. He's going to soak men inside of it. Ah. Moses couldn't soak anybody in it. Elijah could not soak anybody. Isaiah could not. David and all these guys. Because they didn't have the ability to do it. But this man, the Bible said, how God anointed Jesus Christ with the spirit and with power. He went about doing good. Then he died. They crucified him. Because it was needful that he died on the cross. So that his blood will pour and wash men from that contamination of sin. When we are cleansed by the blood, the next thing you qualify to be baptized, which we to receive the spirit we lost, which is the glory and the fullness of his power. Hey, Kazu Shalaba. Oh dear. I'm excited. That's right. So, in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22, it said, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. That is why Jesus needed to die. Because if he does not die, we will still be carrying this nature. So, he needed to die for the blood to wash us so we can receive the baptism of the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Which is the glory in his fullness. And I told you, the spirit is of the person and his word, his power. Until the power is part, it's not complete. Until the spirit is part with the power, it's still not complete. So under the Old Testament, they had the power. A little of it. They didn't have the person. Oh dear. So they can't give it to anybody. They can't dispense it. So Jesus is the true dispenser of glory. He is the true dispenser. Listen, I said he is what? The true dispenser of the glory of God, which men lost. Hallelujah. Now, when he washes you with the blood, the next thing he does, let, let me, let's find another scripture. Ephesians 1.7. Ephesians 1.7. Oh, In whom we have redemption through his blood. Hey, in him, we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins. According to the riches of his grace. According to the riches of his what? Grace. Of his grace. So, when you receive this Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you confess that he died on the cross, his blood washes you from the nature of sin. Now you qualify to receive the glory, which is the spirit and his fire. Hallelujah. And only one man is able to do it. And this man is speaking. In John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39, this is what he said. This is what he said. He said, <laughs> Who is thirsty? Hey. Anybody that doesn't have the glory, you are thirsty. Zala, and he said, For all have sinned, which means every man is thirsty. 
Caucasian. That's right. Any man walking, whether you are Caucasian, an African, and you are an Indian, whatever color you are, or race, once you were born by a man and a woman, the Bible says you are thirsty, thirsty out of the glory you have come short of. Mm. So it was needful for God to restore this glory. And only one person. So Jesus said, Who is thirsty? Let it come to me. And out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And the Bible describes it here. It says, in parenthesis, it said the glory is talking about, the living water is talking about here, is rather the Holy Ghost. Because at that time, Jesus had not died. He had not been raised. And so he could not share the spirit. Why? Because it needs the blood to cleanse men first. Because he can dispense the spirit. So he needed to die. But now he died and rose. Anybody that believes in him, it takes faith in his death and resurrection. Can you believe in Zion? Believe this man. He said, whosoever shall believe in his name, you will not be ashamed. Which means you will not be disappointed of the spirit. You will receive the gift of the spirit. Whosoever shall believe in him, he said, you shall be saved. Hallelujah. Then, let me go on. Eh? And in, in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19, he said, whilst the blood was shed, the Holy Ghost, this glory of God, as a person was inside the blood of Jesus, reconciling man. You will see, you say, Alfred, and how does the blood work now? As I'm preaching right now, he's inside the blood, asking somebody out there, mm. sister, it doesn't matter what you have done. Da, da, I'm da, releasing da, da. my words are the blood, the da, glory, da, da. the gospel I'm preaching is the blood. If you receive right now, God is inside that blood, calling you to come. Yes, I want to join up with you. Reconciliation means, I want to join up with you. I want to come back and live inside of you that is reconciliation brana your mom me no tama tete na me no be say carbon i want to join you again you lost me before but i have come with my power again to feel you hallelujah praise the lord but it comes by faith and it says as many that believes in him he gives them the power he gives them what what does he do when you believe in jesus the holy ghost comes in and gives you what that part of him which is called his power to make you a son of god mm. oh as many that believed in him he gave them what the power restoration comes he comes to live in you and gives you his power so the fullness the person comes in after the blood has washed you then he releases his power is the power that is which is the green card that makes you what a child of god amen now when you receive this holy spirit the next thing that happens he said in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 14 he said can the spirit become the earnest of the spirit the earnest of the spirit means the Holy Ghost becomes your down payment it's like you want to buy a TV but your money is not up to Here they said the TV is 5 million or 500 Ghana and all you have is 300 Ghana you don't have all the money so you tell the, the television owner I want this particular TV so take this 300 put it down I assure you I will add the 200 and pick the TV so God is telling us I'm giving you the Holy Ghost I said down payment that one day when I come to destroy the earth I will spare them so anybody whom you find the Holy Ghost yeah. inside them. God is saying, I, the Holy Ghost is your down payment. Jesus. That one day he will save you. My God. He's not only there for you to speak in tongues. Mm. He's there as a sign. Yeah, as as, 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 as uh, an assurance mm. that God says, when I come to destroy the earth, you shall be spared. Mm. So anybody having this spirit, it's about the glory of God. It means that you shall be spared. The Holy Ghost is the down payment. If God is buying something mm. and he uses the blood to save you and then the holy ghost also acts out as down payment i wonder what next is bringing ah! i wonder i tell you no, you no, don't no, even no. know Re people don't understand what is called christianity the thing is all about here no, there is so much in eternity no, that we are about no, to receive when you receive the spirit he is the down payment in romans 8 verse 16 and 17 he said and our spirit bears witness with the spirit of god that we are what we are the sons of god which means it's the holy ghost that is going to bear witness on the day of judgment ah. to say that you belong to god that's right or you belong to jesus 
Jesus. Jesus. Or you still belong to the devil. When God finds you, you still don't have the glory. It means there's no witness to show that you're a child of God. But if a man have the spirit inside, it means the Holy Ghost is the witness that this one cannot be destroyed. He's a witness for you. In the judgment. Anywhere you go, they set up a judgment. There shall be a lawyer and a judge and a witness. The witness is the Holy Ghost. The judge is Jesus. <laughs> My God. The Holy Ghost witnesses for you. And Jesus, the same, is also your lawyer. I wonder how you lose that such a case. Then the next thing that the Holy Ghost does, I'm almost here. Romans 8 verse 9. He said, he that does not have the spirit of God does not belong to Christ. So, any child of God who is boasting out there, you still don't have the Holy Ghost. He says, you don't belong to me because he is your witness. He is the seal of your down payment. He is the one that shows you belong to Christ. That his blood has bought you. If you don't have him, you will be in trouble that That's day. Right. So, Matthew 7 21. Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, shall be saved on that day. It is not because you sin. It is because that spirit that is the witness you don't have because he that does not have the spirit of Christ doesn't belong to him you can say Lord without him you still go to hell did you see that That's right. did I write it no. then the next thing that the spirit does Second Corinthians 3 17 he said where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty anybody you find out that the Holy Ghost lives inside of them. God has restored the glory in them. It means that they are free. You are free from hey! You are free from sin. You are free from demons. Free from occultic powers and witchcraft. And all. They don't even know this thing. That is why we are telling them you are in bondage. How can somebody be a child of God? Have the Holy Ghost on the inside. And you tell them that they are in bondage. How? When the Bible says, well, you let the spirit, there is freedom. Oh, my brother, my sister, if you have received Jesus, you got freedom. You are free from everything. Now the last one. Hey, the Lord is speaking. And he says in Matthew uh, chapter 3, verse number 11 and 12. Okay, this is what he said. He said, when the spirit comes, when he comes inside a man again, he's being restored. He said he doesn't just come. He comes with his fan. That is the Old Testament English. But the new one will say he comes with a broom. He comes with a broom. And he sweeps inside your life. Your life belongs yeah, to him yeah. now. He sweeps your life. Uh, if he sees sickness, it's rabba, a garbage. Rabba, rabba, rabba. If he sees uh, uh, cancer, rabba, it's garbage. Rabba, Poverty, rabba, garbage. Rabba, rabba, Any evil thing, that is not of God. Rabba, when he rabba, sees rabba. them, they are an arrow in your life. They are garbage in your life. He will sweep them and gather them and set fire to them. He will burn them. If you're a child of God, you are listening to me right now. The Holy Ghost came to gather the chaff inside of your life. Every sickness, every evil, gathering them now, setting fire to them. Yes, Lord. But if you have not received him, He's calling you today. Yes, Lord. These are the benefits Marrakech. of them that have the spirit. Why are you out there? Katenes. And if you don't have the spirit, Ezinanes. you shall be cast into the lake of fire. Don't let anyone deceive you. The heaven is real. Hey. And the lake of fire is real. Yes. And men who do not have the nature of God, the glory restored, they will go to hell. That's right. And he said, when the spirit descends on the man, it means the glory has come. Mm. And if the glory came, it said, rise up and shine. Hey. I see you shining. Hey. Hey. In your life, you never shone in anything. Da, 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 I see you uh, shining in, in the media. You are shining in You are shining in teaching. You are shining in, hey. are shining in business. Da, da, da. Of the spirit. Yes, Lord. Shine up. Jesus. Da, glory. Glory. How can you have this glory of oh, inside you Mazada. and garbage is in your life? Katana. I see the Lord gathering in them the name of and Jesus. setting fire to in them. The name of in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm speaking to you. Hey, Shadadadaha. Meliatadadado. Yegelele badadabaha. Hey, Yashala labadia padabadaha. Radimini maduata. Masata. Ayedede shadadaha. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord bless and honor you. Yes. We love you. Don't die without the glory restored. Or you shall be cast into the lake of fire. Sure. But if you get the glory restored, which is the spirit and his power, mm. I tell you, you will not be the same. That's right. My name is Eric Andrew William. That's right. And I'm trumpeting the word of God. Tell them. Yeah. Time is 
so a are you gathering my children are you going to be one of them for there is a destruction coming mm. run away he washes you with the blood and restores the glory don't you want this what do you want it's better than gold and silver it's better than anything you can ever think of when we come and say this and they think we're joking but the day is coming when men shall wail and howl like dogs as if they are animals because they rejected this offer which is free God bless you. And if you, you heard us, I want you to you want to be part of this gift God is restored. I want you to put your hand on your chest and say with me say when you go, if they believe in their heart and confess with their tongue, they shall be saved. So say with me. Say Abba Father. Abba Father. Your name is Jehovah. Your name is Jehovah. You do not lie. You do not lie. You said I'm a sinner. You said I'm a sinner. I was born with it. I was born with it. I believe. I believe. You said you have loved me. You said you have loved me. So loved me. So loved me. With such great love. With such great love. I believe. I believe. He said, for that reason. He said, for that reason. Your son Jesus died. Your son Jesus died. Shed his blood. Shed his blood. To pay for my sins. To pay for my and sins. And to cleanse me. And to cleanse me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I believe. I believe. He died. He died. And was buried. And was buried. And on the third day. And on the third day. That glory we lost. That glory we lost. Which is the spirit. Which is the spirit. And his power. And his power. Raised him from the dead. Raised him from the dead. He lives forever. He lives forever more. And as many that and believe him. Many that believe in you him. restore the glory. You restore the glory. I believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. As my Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior that, he died and rose that he died and rose again. Give me this spirit. Give me this spirit. Which is the glory. Which is the glory. That I may shine again. That I may shine again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you said these things with me, then the glory has been restored. Amen. You become part of God's family and his children. And the destruction coming, you are exempted forever. God bless and honor you. I pray for you that be sick. You are healed hey! by the power Jesus. of glory. From this day, anywhere you are sick, the hand of God of his glory has come there. The power, the fire and the glory it touches you. Yes, Lord. You are made free. Yes. Be free right hey! now. Be free right yes, now. Lord. In Jesus' name, the name of you Jesus. will not die. Yes. You will live and declare the glory the of God in the land start. of the living. God bless and honor you. We love you but Jesus loves you better. My name, as I said, is Eric Country Williams. God bless you so much. We love you until we come your way on Saturday to pray. Pastor Alfred will give you the details. We love you. And we love Trend Africa Radio. Tell somebody about us. We will take the world for Christ. Ciao, ciao, ciao. ciao. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. It's getting hotter and better in the studios of Trend Africa. I tell you, try and as much as possible to share the video on Facebook and share to as many as you can so they will also be a blessing. And we want to say God bless you, Daddy. God bless you for the powerful word. God has used you to release unto his people in the name of Jesus. Christ Hill Church inviting you to our Tuesday program, our Tuesday services in... Uh, 6 30 to 8 30 in the evening come and be taught the word of god and walk in the kingdom life on earth in the name of the lord jesus and you will be a blessing i also want to invite you to our friday prayer evening service hey come and pray for men ought always to pray and not to faint come with your family christ Hill church is located beyond ablikuma in sakina behind the filling station Come with your family and ye shall be blessed. I also want to invite you to our Sunday programs, our victory service program in the morning, 8 o'clock sharp, 10.30, we are off. Come and you shall be blessed. And also coming your way again on Saturday morning, um, 9 to 10 a.m. And you shall be blessed. Come and pray on Saturday morning, Trend African Radio and Trend African Facebook. Also, Christ Hill Church Facebook and you shall be blessed. I came here also. We all came with the man of God, Prophet Eric and Williams. I'm here with Pastor uh, Lady Pastor Rejoice, and also I am Pastor Alfred. God bless you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Trend, 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 trend African Radio, redefining Africa.
tears Yes, He will save you And cause you to be free